Hey everyone, it's Stippling. I'm here in the, the Marketorium. The best place for tips, tricks, and modifications to your official and custom CCBS creations. Today I'm here with Umarak the Destroyer, aka Gappy Neck. In my review, I was not too fond of and not above harping at the fact that the neck was very gappy. There are a lot of exposed elements that make the neck look tacked on and fake, and I wanted to solve that. In the review, I offered up this solution for it. The only thing I wish is maybe it was mounted on a ball joint so you could kind of swivel this whole thing. It would get you some really interesting poses if it was. And now I'm here to put my money where my mouth is and to try to do what I said LEGO should do. Taking a look at a decapitated Umarak, I've pulled off his neck piece as a means to show you what we'll be building instead. So in this one, there's just a giant hole in it that we're going to try to destroy. This is Umarak's official neck destructed into parts. So taking a look at what we need to create a ball and socket based neck attachment, we will have to remove these two seven long Technic beams and replace them with matching two five long Technic beams. So we can go ahead and put those in its place and we'll dump these off on the side. In addition, there's some things we will need to add that aren't in here at all, not even close. First one would be this bone piece, and second would be this axle pin. Whoop, dropped it. We can take out this extra long axle pin because we won't need that. We can also remove one extra long pin, one regular pin, and this 90 degree Technic thing that always looks like an owl to me. So as you can see, some very slight adjustments to parts, and that's all you need to make a posable neck joint. So let's get building. And there it is. So that's essentially it. Instead of attaching it via pins, you'll attach it with a ball and socket instead. But you may be wondering, what was the point of all this if that gap is still there? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The gap can easily go away by adjusting the head downward. And then you can accommodate that change of position by bringing the head right back up. So you get almost this sloping of it that's simu simulated here on the pauldrons and then extends down into the neck. It really gives it these natural curves that you don't typically see in a Bionicle set. With this simple change to Umarak's neck, his head sits about a half length lower than it used to be. I would consider that a fair trade-off to make it more aesthetically pleasing. But if for some who may think height is the sole factor, you could always do this. This may also be why LEGO opted not to do this. While they like to encourage free play, this would be kind of shocking to a child. Even with the neck having absurd ranges of motion, I think it's worth it. Being able to get these really fluid poses where he can look side to side now is really great. This doesn't quite fix the problem of looking upward because it's that larger brain stock. They could have really put in a that shorter length brain stock they introduced in 2016 and it would have completely alleviated this problem or at least enough to where he could look up directly. But I think there's enough articulation in here to give him the effect of looking side to side to where he kind of looks as though he's looking up. By utilizing this ball and socket based connection we also inadvertently fill the gap that was made through the Technic construction. No longer is there an open hole exposed and letting in light, instead it's filled up with a the black bone piece. Some may not like that ball in there, and I can understand that, but I think it's a vastly improved change and a simple change at that. Any Machus can take a problem and solve it by throwing parts at it, but my goal in this instance was to use as little parts as possible to almost give LEGO an alternative of what they could have done instead, while keeping the parts count as low as possible. When comparing the original neck on the left to the custom neck I created on the right, you can really see that nothing really changes in terms of size. The two can be overlaid on top of each other and everything is positioned more or less identically. There are only two slight differences anatomically to the, between the two, both of which are slight length increasements on the custom neck. You can see that the attachment point for the custom neck sits about one half length pin taller than the, the original neck. That's due to this awkward shaping of this uh, Technic piece here. The other length difference would be due to the point at which the neck attaches to the top of the spine. The custom neck, due to the Glatorian neck used here, actually has one pin length longer. But all of that can be adjusted with posing. 
As I said before, there are countless things you could do to this set to improve it. I just wanted to showcase and offer up one example of something that really, I thought, could fix the problem. So what do you think? Are there other ways to fix the neck besides what I presented here? Do you like this method better? And let me know if you enjoyed watching this video. I'm gonna hopefully make a lot more like it, so thanks for watching.